If you thought that the Republicans weren't doing anything about the opioid crisis in America, think again. They're actually planning something massive. A massive cut in federal funding for substance abuse treatment across the country, which shows that clearly they were paying attention to national concerns during this last election. And so this would actually come about as a nice little side effect of the AHCA or Trump Care, whatever you want to call it. And the cuts that would be made to Medicaid expansion that had been ongoing since the ACA was put into effect. The GOP healthcare bill would end the extra funding states get through expanded Medicaid in 2020 and place a limit on overall federal spending for the program in the future. This is one of the reasons, by the way, and we've we've cited this before, but we will again, that the CBO estimates that approximately 14 million people will lose their health insurance because they got it through that process that would be ended. And that obviously affects every area of those people's health insurance. But one area that doesn't get talked about nearly as much is the Medicaid influence on substance abuse treatment, including some of the most deadly substances, the opioids. Medicaid expansion accounted for over 60% of total Medicaid spending on substance abuse treatment in Kentucky, nearly half in West Virginia, nearly 60% in Michigan and Maryland, and almost a third in Rhode Island. And so if you're one of the people who got your health insurance in those states and many others through the Medicaid expansion under the ACA, you could find that once Trump care gets passed, you suddenly don't have that money. Mm -hmm. And that's important because the substance abuse treatment is not cheap. According to to one report, outpatient opioid addiction treatment that includes medication like methadone averages between six and eight thousand dollars a year. And if you're paying out of pocket and using the most effective medicines, which are more expensive, you'll pay far more. And that means that people won't get the treatment that they're getting right now, which means that we'll have more deaths. On the upside, on the flip side, not the upside, but the flip side is many people with heroin addictions are quite well off. So, <laughs> right. um, so, it's so they'll be they fine, it. I guess. Well, this it's would have been bad news for Rush Limbaugh, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. The, He'll uh, probably be okay, I would imagine. You know, part so of his contract. It's good that we finally get some details because, you know, look, these guys aren't, as I've said, and, and, and you guys agree. Uh, and and I think everybody paying attention. These guys are not interested in, in in governing. I say this all the time. They're interested in ungovering. They're interested in undoing government. Uh, and and so you know initially Trump proposed that uh, after running some of his campaign on how he'd fight the opioid epidemic, yeah. which sort of oddly became or surprisingly uh, and welcomely uh, became a campaign issue that that Hillary Clinton addressed, that Bernie Sanders addressed, and that Donald Trump even and Kasich. And Kasich certainly Kasich during, a lot. During Kasich the primaries, a lot. Yeah. And it became an issue that a number of candidates addressed. The Democrats addressed it frequently, and and Trump addressed it, and Kasich perhaps more than anyone. It's weird they addressed it a lot in New Hampshire, which has among the highest rates, yeah. and it's next to Vermont, it's weird, which yeah. also does. And then it didn't really come up as much. The administration was originally eyeing a 95 percent cut to the Office of National Drug Control Policy. It was one of the first things, not one of the first things, but it was an early Trump act. A 90 essentially. Totally defunding a federal drug control office in the middle of a nationwide opioid epidemic. Yeah. There was outcry from many Republican governors, including some federal Republicans, and every Democrat complaining. And then they 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 backpedal and they ended up proposing 369 million for the office. And it's not the primary source of being able to fight an opioid epidemic, but it is a central office which can coordinate. Yeah. And if done right, would be useful. So they end up backpedaling off their 95% cut, which is draconian and cruel. And again, just shows a desire of, hey, here's a let's just stop this department. Let's yeah. not govern here. So their new proposal was 369 million, which they made. It's a 5% cut. So again, like, that's not tackling a problem. Mm-hmm. That is unta- That is the opioid epidemic broke that tackle, right? You know, right. And, yeah. and slipped away. It's a football reference, John. Um, uh, the, so you know, and so they're going to end up getting credit <laughs> to some extent for a five yeah. percent cut in right. what is clearly a national crisis. Yeah. And it was something that these numbers were obviously upped during the previous eight years to the Trump presidency, and the uh, and the problem has gotten worse. And what you what you're dealing with though is sort of the continuation that's trickled down to the Congress too. This is a, a president who seems to still be, in my estimation, pissed that Barack Obama made a bunch of jokes about him at the White House correspondence dinner, mm. and is trying to undo everything that happened in the eight years of the Obama presidency. Yeah. 
I think a lot of the way that the Congress is running is the same way. They said no to it when it was proposed, and now they want to undo whatever yeah. is there and, and, and in the wrong places. But let's talk about why this needs to be addressed. And it's not just because I want to make sure that people stay focused on the HCA and the debate that's going on right now in the Senate, or the debate that should be going on anyway. Let's bring up this next chart. It's, we, we showed this recently in the Young Turks. I want to show it again. The drug induced deaths. Now, opioids are not the only component of that, but they are the single largest component of that. And opioids, theoretically, okay, they're dangerous. There's always going to be some deaths. And so maybe you're at some point on that line. But the rise, that is because of the profit motive. And it's easy for many people, I think, to, to that, that haven't experienced this. They don't know anyone in their immediate family that's experienced it. I think it's a, a shrinking percentage of the American population that doesn't know anybody, but there's some people that will look at that and say, at the end of the day, okay, it's not marijuana, it's not crack, but it's still drugs. And these people theoretically could have just stopped doing it. But you get on it because you hurt your back or you hurt your leg or something. And then the human ability to, to overcome that addiction, like these are incredibly strong, incredibly addictive substances. This is not a matter of willpower, this isn't put down the muffin. This is this breaks down your body's ability. Which, by to the stop. way, I, I can't do. So I can't even do that. <laughs> yeah. I can't literally do that. I've never had a drug like this. Right. I imagine I would be addicted, and that's why you see the numbers of people dying shooting up. And uh, that is that that is a trend that might continue, might accelerate if Trump care gets put into law. We know almost nothing about the Senate version of the AHCA. It's entirely possible that they're going in that back room and playing Mario Kart. Uh, would we actually know? I don't know that we would. They're not um, doing that because they're they are adults. They're a thousand, yeah. And it's adults a, don't play it's a fun game. Games, uh, but we do have a little bit more information uh, that Axios uh, was able to confirm. So one of the the areas of uh, of the House version uh, that a lot of people had a problem with and was perversely the thing that got a lot of the conservatives on board was uh, the state waivers for some of the protections under the ACA that states could opt out of the things about the ACA that make it worth a damn. And uh, now we know some of the things that will be in the Senate version, waivers that states can get uh, for little things like uh, providing essential health benefits <laughs> or the list of 10 services insurers must cover. So essential health benefits will not be insured, do what, probably do, not that essential do anyway. Do we know what is what, what are some of those essential benefits? Yeah, we're actually gonna get into, into some. Uh, I think that some of these that we'll get into the last graphic are. All right. Um, the medical loss ratio or the regulation of how much premium income insurers must spend on patient claims. So you know that them doing their job as insurers, trying to make sure that people get medical care will be a lower priority after this. Uh, the age rating band, this is gonna be boring, I apologize, but it's important. The requirement that premiums for older people be no more than three times the amount of premiums charged to younger people. Which I always love when you win an election, you gain control of every branch of government, and then you give a massive middle finger to the oldest voters. Do, do older people vote? I don't know if they do, maybe they do. Uh, but now three times as much isn't enough. Older people could get five times, 10 times as costly insurance. Uh, now let's go They'll to self regulate and keep it to three. <laughs> right. Self, why, why raise it? Right. Uh, and then let's, let's jump to this last graphic. You're gonna see how much you theoretically could have to pay for uh, certain medical procedures or conditions under this new plan that's being considered. So you're seeing there, interestingly, we just talked about drug dependency. Uh, imagine having to pay an additional $20,000 for that if, this, if the states take the waivers. Something like prog. Pregnant, I don't know what that is, maybe it's a cancer. Preg pregnancy, <laughs> it's probably rare, but if you get it, 17,000 additional dollars in certain states you might have to pay. I mean, depression, that's a big problem in America, 10K, that's expensive. Uh, hemophilia, $344,000, and in certain forms of cancer, lung cancer, breast cancer, I'm sure everyone watching this knows someone who's suffered from a form of cancer. Imagine on top of all the other problems that come with that, also having to pay 30 I, to 80, 100,000. I hope 000. when this bill is finally given the light of day, and it may well be after it passes, it passes and becomes right. law. Uh, but just from a political point that, that breast cancer is included in the things they won't cover, but prostate cancer is like that would be <laughs> yeah. that would be a, that would that would yeah. fit the pattern. That, that would fit the pattern. That would yeah. work. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they go to the CBO. This goes to the CBO next week. Right and, next um, week. These are the kinds of things that they will certainly look at. Exactly. Yeah, but we also know that they're going to try to vote by Thursday. So how much time are we going to have between the CBO report coming out 
and wait, then the so vote. Doesn't it go? Does it go to the CBO? Does it? Is it? Does it go to the CBO? And they vote Thursday of next week. No, so that's what I heard. That's what they're talking about. Voting. That's what they're talking about. And so it's important that we get this information out now because if there is less than a day for people to put pressure, and if that's when people finally awaken, when they wake up to uh, to how terrible this bill could be. I don't know that theoretically that's enough time to stop it. So people need to put pressure on them now and they need to not relent until it's actually killed. You don't like ads? I hear you, brother. You know how you can avoid ads for the Young Turks? Become a Young Turks member and get all the content ad free. TYTnetwork.com slash join.